Hello everyone, my name is Fred Williams and I'm a software developer at SAS Institute in Cary, North Carolina and we're here today to talk about the SAN CWE Top 25 Most Dangerous Programming Errors. On January 12, 2009, experts from more than 30 security organizations jointly released a consensus list of the Top 25 Most Dangerous Programming Errors. This list attempts to boil down the more than 700 possible causes of software security issues to the ones that are so prevalent and severe that really no software should be released to customers without evidence that measures were taken to ensure that your software does not contain any of these errors. The main goal of this list is to stop these attacks at the source by educating software developers and testers on how to eliminate all too common mistakes before the software ships. Here's an agenda on what we will cover in this presentation. First, why is there a need for yet another top list geared towards information security errors. There have been a few good lists over the years, including Michael Howard's 19 Deadly Sins of Software Security and the Open Web Application Security Project's Top 10 list that came out starting in 2002. Next, we will briefly mention the most important organizations behind the list, including the SANS Institute and the MITRE organization. We will also cover exactly what is a CWE, what does it stand for. Due to time constraints, we will not be able to go over all 25 errors in depth, but we'll try to cover a few of the biggest hitters. Finally, we will end this presentation with a few of the most important lessons to take away from this list. Lessons that a software development staff can take, implement right away, and start producing more secure software. First of all, what exactly is a top 25 most dangerous programming error list? In a nutshell, this list is a complete list of the most significant programming errors that can lead to serious software vulnerabilities. These errors occur frequently, are very easy to find for attackers and developers alike, and also very easy to exploit. They are considered dangerous because they allow attackers to leverage these errors to steal your data and take over your software. As far as the why, there are a few goals of this list. One is educating the development staff, the developers, the testers with tips on how to make code safer, more testable, and provide metrics for comparisons to other software and tools. Another goal is to improve compliance to governmental regulators such as Sarbanes-Oxley. Web security is becoming very important and crucial to regulators and they want to examine your software to ensure compliance. Finally, the biggest goal is to raise awareness. The best defense is information. Just who are the SANS Institute and the MITRE organization, the brains behind this list? Both could be considered research think tanks. The SANS Institute is very well known for their Internet Storm Center, which is sort of like an all which is sort of like a Homeland Security's terrorist warning center. The MITRE organization is a research cooperative with three branches dedicated to different levels of the government, like the FAA. MITRE is the group that came up with the Common Weakness Enumeration, which is what the CWE stands for. The CWE is a collection that attempts to document all types of software and IT security vulnerabilities. And right now, as of CWE version 1.3, there are up to 726 items in the list. Now, this is where the top 25 errors becomes very important. I don't think that there is a development team that has enough time to try and tackle all 726 errors. That is just too much. If you could get a group of experts to whittle that down to 25, that becomes a little bit more realistic and a little bit more doable. SANS, MITRE, and the other authors of the list decided to divide the errors into three distinct categories. The first nine errors are the errors listed in this slide. This category contains the problems that can come from different ways software components interact, use, or call each other in insecure ways. Here you will find some of the heavy hitters. The first two errors, the ones that cover input validation and proper encoding, are probably the two of the most important errors on this list. The reason is, is that if you address these errors, other errors such as SQL injection and cross-site scripting become very less, less and less impact. The next nine errors bring us to things that can happen when software does not properly manage system resources. And by system resources, I mean property files, application logging files, buffer overflows, and improper initialization. 
Probably the most famous of this list would be the buffer overflows, although such languages as Java has lessened the impact of buffer overflows over the years due to the way Java manages memory. The final seven errors are errors that happen when we misuse, abuse, or just plain ignore proper defense. Using improper cryptographic algorithms are one that is near and dear to our class since we just looked at the MD5 certificate issue. That, that one could fit in this list if a user does not switch from MD5 to SHA1. Other things that are just plain not much of a problem if you are a Joe user rather than a super user, therefore practicing least privileges for users is, a, is another important one in this list. Now let's take, a, let's take a look at some examples in Java of some code that can show what these er how these errors can happen. These examples are in Java, like I said, but those problems are not really related to Java, but pretty much any programming language that programs for the web. Take a look at this as an example of improper input validation. If we get a quantity that's supplied to us by a user through a web page form field, we can take that quantity, multiply it by a price of say like twenty dollars, then call a method that charges a user with the total. Everything's well and good until a user enters a negative number. Instead of deducting their account, we're actually adding money to their account instead of deducting. So, but if, if the programmer took some time to validate that the input was indeed a positive number, then we wouldn't have this problem at all. An improper input validation is considered the number one killer of healthy software. So the idea is, is to validate all your input and assume all input is evil. Improper encoding goes kind of along with improper input validation. This one is the root cause of most injection attacks, especially with web applications. So you want to make sure that you replace your HTML characters, JavaScript script tags, and command separator characters with proper characters that ensures that you will have proper encoding. Do you think Java is safe and not SQL injection vulnerable? Now take a look at this statement. If a user could craft a U name that we pass into this SQL statement instead of just selecting information for that particular username, we could probably craft a, a, a statement that would list all the contents of a database for an attacker. SQL injection is number one attack in terms of frequency according to the World Hackers Internet Database. It targets data rich applications, which is what most web applications are nowadays. Do you think Java is safe and not cross-site scripting vulnerable? If you take a look at this code sample in Java, we take a user supplied first name and if there's an error we just print out the error stack trace but then we continue right along with our code and we'll spit back to a web page whatever the user supplied is the username. So if the username doesn't contain a name but a script tag, we could call any kind, any kind of JavaScript function to perform malicious activity. Cross-site scripting is defined as failure to preserve web page structure and is some of the most prevalent and dangerous attacks according to SANS and CWE. Clear text transmission of sensitive information is another big hitter. We just want to make sure we use encryption whenever possible and SSL from login to log out on web page applications. Chatty error messages is also another problem. Attackers can craft URLs that attempt to get database or SQL errors to spit out to the page and then they can use that information to launch more targeted attacks. Error message information leak can have problems such as user ID and password is incorrect. If you just spit out password is incorrect, that cuts the attacker's time in half because they already know that they have a valid user ID. Don't use C and C++ because they are susceptible to buffer overflows. Use languages such as Java. Finally, we get to the common themes to remember. The SANS and CWE experts were nice enough to categorize each error into three subcategories, prevalence, remedy costs, and frequency of occurrence. So the idea is, is if you tackle the ones that have a high prevalence and higher frequency, 
those are the those are the big hitters and we and we can leave the medium attacks to later also another theme to take away from this presentation is several errors are factors within other errors like we mentioned before the input validation if you tackle those the other errors like SQL injection and cross-site scripting are very mitigated practice least privileges for users give users just enough to do their job use encryption whenever possible like secure socket layers testing is very important that will raise errors and issues that you may have not found without proper testing use tools such as find bugs and code pro and finally keep up with the latest news by listening to podcasts and reading news services like Slashdot, you can keep up with the latest errors and then make amends to try to tackle those errors. Thank you very much.